Hey everyone, Lindsay Geektron here. So I am trying to do a vlog uh, just to kind of, you know, keep relevant on my own channel. It's been kind of uh, dead since I started doing leak trends and I've been remiss in putting content up. So this is my attempt to do so. Uh, I don't know if anybody would really be interested in these vlogs. Oh God. Okay, I'm watching All Stars and Cloud9 is getting clobbered by SKT. Um, and it's very sad because it's right now it's like what 22 to 6 I can't watch but then I have to watch and it's probably you can see it behind me uh, anyway so I crowdsourced the the content for this vlog and uh, most of the the responses were kind of uh, about how I got started in the games industry so kind of my history and then um, <sighs> why did you give them LeBlanc and I'm disappointed. Anyway, um, focus, Lindsay. So I the, the content about this video is mostly how I got started and maybe some tips about how you can jumpstart your own career in the games industry. Uh, I will say, though, that it's, it's different um, if you're just a fan, but I'll get to that later. I, I, I don't want to skip ahead. So anyway, uh, oh, good. They finally killed someone. Good job, Cloud9 so sad hold on oh no sneaky no sneaky oh god the death such death uh, and it's gg okay i can stop paying attention now to that fucking massacre anyway so sad anyway so how i started in the um how i started getting into games um i remember very very young uh, my father had brought home uh, an Intellivision, and for you kids out there, an Intellivision was a very, very, very early console, and it was this, this box, this janky box with these, like, cheesy square controllers and this curled wire is awful. And I played that, and I loved it, uh, and I've always been a big computer fan because my dad's an electronic engineer, so he always had, like, I remember his IBM, and I would play Asteroids and uh, Fetipede and all kinds of really awesome early PC games. And then um, we got a Nintendo when the Nintendo came out and I played Mario. I never played Duck Hunt because the idea of shooting ducks was sad to me. And I had bugs as, a, as friends in elementary school. I was an odd child. So anyway, I played Mario. And then when the Game Boy came out, I played Game Boy like all the time. Um, Super Mario was my favorite. Batman was good. I never played Tetris. Um, it was mostly Mario. He was my homeboy. Kirby was cute. His little, like, thing that he did. And he got fat, and it was adorable. Um, so that's kind of, like, how I, I started getting into video games. And then when N64 came out, that's when shit really got real. Uh, I played uh, Mario Kart. I, I'm still consistently undefeated in Mario Kart. Uh, give me Yoshi, and I will wreck your shit. And I played the game until I, I beat it, and then the map switched, and then, oh, that was good. Rogue Squadron was another favorite. I couldn't get past the fucking Hoth level, because fuck that noise. Um, episode 1, Pod Racer was great, too. I almost beat that game, except for Boonta Eve. The last, the last chunk of it, the big one, I couldn't, couldn't get past that one. Fuck that shit. Um... And then I, at the same time, I also played on the PC heavily. It was Sims. I would make boys in, in school in my Sims. And whoever didn't like me or, or stopped liking me or whatever, uh, I made them in Sims. And I put them in a house with a TV and I got rid of all the windows. And I turned the TV on and then I fast forwarded the game because you could do that in the original Sims. And it was this basically like this speeded up version of how the Sim would die. Like he, since the TV was on, he couldn't go to sleep. So like he'd stand there and cry and then he would wet himself and then he'd pass out on the floor and then the TV would wake him up and he'd get up and he'd cry and he'd piss himself again <laughs> until he starved to death. Um, conversely, I also put them in a pool and then I paused the game and then I went to the editor mode and I took out the stairs and then I sped it up again and he would swim himself to death. Um, and I had like one game save where I had all these like dead boyfriends or whatever on this hill and they would haunt the neighborhood. <sighs> Odd child. Uh, roller coaster tycoon. I would make death roller coasters and people did not like them. 
Uh, I played Unreal for a little bit, Doom for a little bit, uh, Phantom Menace. Um, yeah, that was my my main my main high school days. Um, and then I got an Xbox, and I started playing Halo, which was terrible because oh my god, just the death. And then I figured out World of Warcraft. Oh my god, I was fat, Lindsay. It was bad. Which leads me nicely into Curse. I, uh, in 2009, I applied for a job on Craigslist in San Francisco to be a receptionist for this media games company. And I used Curse playing World of Warcraft for my add-ons and everything. And I didn't think I would get the job, and I was the only girl who applied funnily enough. And not only was I the only girl who applied, I was the only girl who applied um, who actually was like able to prove that she played World of Warcraft and use the curse client. And I remember I met with Uber and uh, the VP and the finance person at the time, and they seemed to really like me, obviously, because then they hired me. So I moved to San Francisco and I started working for Curse. And I was a receptionist, and I worked my way up from the receptionist to their office manager, and it was amazing. Like my first Christmas there, um, they had a Christmas party at Uber's house in San Francisco, and he was double fisting bottles of champagne and these like the plastic solo cups. So he would top everyone off, so you wouldn't know how much you would drink. So I remember I, I I got so drunk to the point where I I actually thought I could sing Du Host on American Idol, and and then I told Uber to fuck off because he thought he. He had said I had too much to drink, and I told him to fuck off, and everyone's face was like, <gasps> and I didn't get fired. I still don't know how that happened. Anyway, that was my first Christmas at Curse, and I worked my way up from receptionist to office manager to HR generalist, which was great, except I don't have a head for things like that. I just I couldn't couldn't be bothered. Uh, and then their video department started, and I bugged them and bugged them and bugged them to give me an audition, and they did. And in 2012, uh, I became their their video host in training. And Pico was there, Pico Mouse. And at some point in July of that year, 2012, we became co-hosts together. And uh, they wanted me to stream on Twitch and learn how to play League of Legends. And I told them to fuck off because I just that's I don't want to play League of Legends. Screw that. And I resisted and I resisted. And then in December in 2012, they announced that their video department would be moving to Alabama. And I am not an Alabamian. I'm a Californian. And for me to move to Alabama from California was like, no, I'm not going to. So I quit. And in 2013, I started my own endeavors into. Uh, trying to be a YouTube content creator on my own. So I have my home studio, I have a green screen that I put up, we bought lights and a camera, and I use that giant TV in the background as my teleprompter sometimes, and kind of did my own thing for about a year. I got partnered with Full Screen Arcade for my YouTube channel. Uh, High Rollers Gaming kind of picked me up, and I became part of their stream team when I figured out that streaming League of Legends was actually a fuck ton of fun. And I became partnered on Twitch actually today, so yay! So after a year of streaming, or a year and a half almost of streaming League of Legends, I finally became a partner with Twitch, and it takes a long time. And let's see, during 2013, I was picked up by Cloth5, and they do analysis for League of Legends, and I was their video host for quite some time, until uh, Law King picked me up to do league trends in October of 2013. And through this time I was doing all kinds of video content. I had my own channel. Um, I did various shows for Full Screen Arcade and Claw 5. And I went to conventions and I did videos. I worked um, as a Fragdoll cadet for New York Comic Con last year. So I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and January 1st was my first day at Zam. I'm their brand ambassador now. So hi Zam, thank you for saving me. And they're great. I get to do all kinds of shows for them. I get to travel and cover conventions, and it's great. Like, it's really a, a dream job, and I'm so grateful. Um, so what I've learned, this whole process of, like, two years of being a video host in the games industry is that you have to be consistent. And if you want to get into the games industry, you have to be more than just a fan. Like, if you just love video games and that's all you want to do, you're not gonna you're not going to get a job because that... That being a fan 
is is just something that's kind of given, right? Like it's a base. You have to be able to provide something to a company. So my my second piece of advice besides being consistent is to actually have a skill that you can contribute. For me, it's a video host. And, and I know that I get a lot of flack on YouTube because this girl sounds cheesy or she sounds like she's reading. It's actually a really hard job to stand in front of a camera and perform a script so it sounds extemporaneous. And uh, as uh, my my background is performance, like that's what I do. I dance, I act. I'm learning how to sing, um, but that's kind of like my thing is performance. And I just paint with the gamer brush. I love video games. I'm a fan, so I'm not not a gamer. Um, but my skill that I bring is performance. I'm able to perform and present information in a way that's palatable to people, and they watch, and it it promotes the brand that I represent. And if you want to get into the games industry, have a skill that you can contribute. Some people are graphic designers, like my friend Fersgal. He's he's graphics guy. He's amazing. Uh, I have a lot of people who who are coders and programmers. Uh, I have a lot of friends who really like marketing or sales. Like you have to have some kind of relevant skill to contribute, besides just being a fan. Fans. It, that's you're the audience like you're what we do this for if you want to be in the games industry figure out an aspect that you really enjoy if you like the making of games figuring out okay well do you like to write do you like to do voiceover do you like to do shading or lighting or coding like what is it about the, that game that you like doing the most and then focus on that and get highly specialized in that process right um like my friend Charlie from Cloth5, he's actually the coach for Cloud9, but when I first met him, he was just super good at numbers. Like he actually writes the League Trends show with me. He's he's an analyst, but he's more than just a fan. Like he knows his shit. Like he's a stats guy. He can analyze things and figure out why champions being picked and banned more, and that lend itself to contributing to Cloud9, um, which just lost behind me. R.I.P. in peace. Uh, but the point is, is to not only be consistent, but have something that contributes to the games industry as a whole, right? We have fans in spades. We're all fans, like, duh. So go above and beyond. Figure out what particular aspect calls to you. And I'm not saying, like, that's, that's the only thing you should focus on ever. Uh, but pick something and do it and do it consistently and then apply yourself. So that's my that's my two cents about how to get involved in the games industry. It's a huge industry. It's the biggest market in the world. It's bigger than movies and music combined. There's room enough for everybody. Like we all win. Um, and it's it's surprisingly a really tight knit group of people. The games industry and we're all we're all really good friends and we all hang out. Um, but we all have this overlying this overarching theme of being a contribution to games as opposed to just being a fan. So. Um, that's my, that's my two cents. So, uh, thank you so much for bearing with me on my first vlog attempt. This is, I have no idea what I'm doing in any case. So, um, I'm going to go back to doing my job. I'm going to load up Daisy and try to figure that shit out. Cause YOLO, right? That's what the kids say. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Geektron. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I mean, you're here already, but subscribe again. Tell your friends to subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, uh, uh, Agent Geektron, and I switch. I switch. <laughs> I stream on Twitch. That's the new thing. As I switch. You're welcome. You can keep that one. It's a freebie. Um, I stream on Twitch uh, Tuesdays and Friday, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. League of Legends. It's a clusterfuck. I mean, I'm I'm a pro. Don't act like you're not impressed. And uh, that's all for me. I'm going to try and do this weekly, maybe every day. The next video will be coming out probably in a week. And that will be more of like what I do in my free time. Because I know that you guys all care. So <laughs> um, on that note, I'm going to go um, play DayZ. So I will uh, talk to you guys all later. Thank you so much for watching. Follow me on all of the things. And uh, keep bye.